having multiple species, multiple animals, and multiple personalities in your home can feel like a balancing act sometimes. I wanted to talk about what are some of the key features that I have found that really help me bring a little bit of peace to my household. So my household is shared by two humans, one dog, and two cats. And adding new animals and then making sure that all of my animals and us as well get along peacefully has been and can be a little bit challenging. But there are three things in particular that I have found that make a huge difference and that really allowed us all to feel respected, relaxed, and really get a chance to enjoy ourselves and enjoy each other. So the first thing is everybody needs a particular space. Now, the thing is, because we are dealing with different species, we have humans, we have dogs, we have cats, we all interact with each other and expect different things from each other. And sometimes we don't understand each other. We all have different languages. We all have different things that make us unique and that as a species we expect from the people who live with us. So having spaces that are uniquely ours, I found to be one of the most important things. When it came to introducing cats, I actually had Iberia first. I needed to make sure that I had territories, let's say, that would be unique to each of the species that I had. So for example, I had the couch, which is actually still this couch, and this is what I call my territory. So I get to choose where I sit um, or lie or, you know, um, have dinner or whatever on my couch. And Iberia likes to sit next to me, but she also needed a place, place of her own and she has her crate. That is her safe space and that is a space that um, where she eats and where she can go when she needs a little bit of alone time, which she usually doesn't need, but she has if she needs it. I wanted the cats to have something similar. I actually built them some spaces that would be elevated so that they would feel that they had their own territory. It's very important to respect each other's spaces and it was very important to me that they would have what I considered a safe space. Now, this doesn't mean that they're allowed to hurt me if I need to reach out to them and, and grab them or, or move them for some reason. Just like Iberia is not allowed to bite me if I put a hand inside of her crate, just like I am not allowed to shoot them or slap them or be rude to my animals when they are in my space, which they usually are because we all like to sit on the couch together. I just wanted to make sure that there was a clear understanding of where each of us belongs and that there would be respect. The other thing when it came to spaces that I paid attention to was comfort and style. So I made sure that when I had cat trees that they would have beds that they were very comfortable sleeping in, that Iberia had places that she was comfortable in. So being in the house would be relaxing and it would be inviting for all those involved. And obviously as I chose these things, I tried to choose colors that also made it aesthetically pleasing for me so that I wouldn't every time I see the cat tree kind of, you know, give it the ugly look because it's, you know, it's a eyesore. I just wanted to make sure I felt comfortable whenever I was by it and I was looking at it and then my cats would feel my comfort level, which they actually do because we know they're so sensitive, right? So it, it, it's, it's a small thing, but it's actually not that small. The other commodity that we never think of, but I think that we should pay more attention to, is time. It's not a matter of actual minutes strung together so that I can say I spent 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, and everybody should be happy. But the quality and the time of day that they would have would respect their needs. So for example, when we first wake up in the morning, I'm not quite awake, Iberia's not quite awake, the cats are definitely ready, definitely. But we are definitely not. So that is actually what I call my time. And my animals can share that time with me, which they usually do, but it's about me. Then we have Iberia's time. So she loves, she loves our morning walk. And that's something that, you know, I love to share with her. And when we go, I really make it about her. Caledonia will come in the morning and she will come and say hello in bed. And she doesn't want much, but she just wants the recognition that it's now morning, that I'm awake, and then she'll kind of go her own way. In the same way, Britannia, somewhere in the middle of the morning, she gets to sit on my lap and that's kind of her time. And also she likes to come at night when I go to bed and she likes to lay down next to me or she likes to lay on my chest and she has her five or 10 minutes of Britannia time. And I really have to sometimes protect her time from Caledonia, who is one of those people, I have to say people, you, you know what I mean, but I have to say people because she's one of those people where when Britannia gets attention, then she needs to be in it. 
when Iberia gets attention, she needs to be in it. She needs to be in all the time when other people are getting something. She gets this like major FOMO. And I've really had to protect that so that when Britannia comes and then Caledonia comes over and tries to push in, that I just kind of, you know, I pet her, but then I just kind of ignore her because I have to respect the time that Britannia has chosen to share with me. It's, it's a small thing, but time makes a huge difference. So keep this in mind in your own family group and look at and try to really pay attention and be mindful of what the timings are and how you can best devote yourself to them. I have really enjoyed paying attention to the time. It's been a really helpful mindfulness challenge for me and it's really kind of changed the way I look at my animal family and, and humans are part of my animal family as well. If this was helpful, I'm going to ask you the favor to go ahead and click the like button. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and it really gives me a sense of the kind of videos that you like to watch and that maybe I should make more of. So if anything in this video was exactly what you like to hear and the way you like to think of things, then it would be truly helpful. Thank you. The other thing that I noticed was the difference between a sense of belonging and a sense of ownership. I like to think of our home not so much as a democracy where everybody gets a say, but so much of a benign dictatorship. With me as dictator and goddess supreme of the house, um, I hope that you understand what, what I'm trying to say, but basically I didn't want my animals to be territorial, just like I didn't want to be overly territorial. I didn't want there to be fighting. And especially because, you know, I introduced two cats to a dog who at the time, a terrier, who was young and has a very strong prey instinct. So I didn't want there to be any sort of reaction and I didn't want that reaction in me as well. So I decided that everything that is in my home is actually mine and it is ours to use, but it kind of goes back down to being mine. So that all of my animals know that it doesn't necessarily belong to them, but they totally get to use it. And I don't necessarily have to do anything. I don't have to exert my power or exert my dominance or exert anything um, about the things in my home, but it does mean that I have access to them when I need it. And it just kind of works so that when I'm moving things or I'm moving them for whatever reason, that I did it always with kind of a gentle touch and in a gentle way. And because I have this kind of straightforward way of doing it, there was never, has never been an issue with, you know, somebody fighting over it or, you know, a cat trying to bite me because I'm removing something or, or Iberia or a cat trying to bite me or especially with Iberia and the cats fighting, which is what I was worried about over spaces, especially when it comes to space and next to me. Iberia is very jealous and Britannia is actually, um, you know, particular in her own way as well. So that was something that I wanted to watch and that's something that's really helped. Pay attention to this in your house as well and try to see how you can make it and how that works for you. And I would be really curious. So if you, if you have a different way of looking at it, then, you know, leave me a comment. I'm really um, curious to see what other households do, but I found that this actually made it so that all of our different species could live together coexist and be peaceful with each other. And when it came to dealing with each other, I found that routines were key. Now, this is mostly because, as I said in the beginning, we are different species, we have different needs, and we have different way of communicating things. And I just wanted there to be something that helped us all understand each other so that we would know all know what happens and when it happens. And routines seems to be the easiest thing. I, I tend to like routines, but it, if you're more of a fly off the seats of your pants kind of person, it doesn't have to be that your life is completely structured. It just that certain things always happen in a certain way so that there's no need to fight over it. There's no need to discuss over it. It's just the way it's done. So I hope that I gave you a couple of thoughts and a little bit of a different way of looking at things. I really enjoy having different animals in my house and I just, I just couldn't have it any other way. And when I introduced a new human to our family, I really saw how many of these things helped when he first came in and had to get to know the cats and had to get to know Iberia. So it's, it's, really, it's really been kind of interesting and it's really been a powerful learning lesson for me. And I hope it will be for you as well. Thank you for watching today's video. Please give your animals a kiss for me and um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.